Well, it is a very hot and humid day in Toronto, and I am in the 2021 Mazda CX-3. And today we're talking about how this car has a few problems with it that really bother me, but Mazda has already fixed them. And if that confuses you, I'll explain. So the Mazda CX-3 is Mazda's most affordable and smallest CUV. It actually costs within, you know, $250 of the Mazda 3 compact hatchback, $23,000 and change for both. For an additional $3,250, you can step up to the Mazda CX-30, but we'll talk about that one a little later. The thing you need to know is that the Mazda CX-3 comes in three trims, GX, GS, and GT, which is what we're driving, being the most expensive and the nicest option. But no matter which trim you select, it does come with the same two liter inline four cylinder engine, makes 146 horsepower and 148 pound feet of torque. The GT comes with a few things that you don't get in the other trims, obviously, because why would it be a separate trim if they didn't? Uh, and that includes the power driver's seat. Now, it's been a while since I've been in a car that was the top trim that did not have a power passenger seat. Uh, and the reason that's like that is because this car came out in 2015, which was a long time ago. And to be fair, it was pretty thoroughly refreshed in 2018, but no matter which way you cut it, the CX-3 is an old car and it shows. Cars like the CX-30 and the Mazda 3 hatchback have already received Mazda's brand new design language and they're really, really great cars. Driving experience otherwise is really a mixed bag. There is that famous Mazda agility to be had. This car handles really well and it is actually really fun to drive in the corners. I continue to say and believe that in the affordable field, Mazda's chassis engineers are the very best in the business. The ride is soft, but composed and athletic. It's a really hard trick to pull off, and it does it without any fancy active stabilizer bars or dampers, just really good quality engineering. This engine spins fast on the highway. I realize it's only a non-turbocharged two liter and it's moving an all-wheel drive system in a compact CUV. Still though, 2,500 RPM on the highway is higher than most of its competitors do. It's working with a six-speed automatic in a world where a lot of its competitors have already made the move to eight-speed units. And so I think it just doesn't quite have the flexibility of ratios to really drop those revs low on the highway when you're cruising. And again, that contributes to the noise on the highway. Another thing that Mazda absolutely nailed in this one, and frankly, they get it right in almost all their cars, the seating position is great. I love the almost vertical wheel, the shifter falls right to hand. I'm very comfortable in this car and I could drive it a long time. I find that a lot of times in these small CUVs, the seating positions are very odd and this one just isn't. It feels very natural. I have lots of stretch out room, although it's worth noting, knee room is a bit constrained just by the design of the center console and the door panel. So horizontally, it leaves something to be desired but very lanky and tall people will find plenty of stretch out room in the CX-3, considering it is a compact. Inside, again, some hits and some really big misses. Let's go through it. First of all, I like the materials. In fact, there's like a faked leather stitch thing on the dashboard, which is so convincing, I really was fooled a lot of the week. It's not until you touch it, you realize that it's not leather. The interior design itself also looks great. I love these big horizontal lines they have. I love the circular air vents. I like the suede dashboard panel and the stitching. It's a nice looking interior. I also like that it's got a racy center tachometer, which immediately became less appealing as I started driving and realized that I can't visually watch a needle to see my speed. I don't know if I'm just an analog clock guy or what it is, but the digital number speedometer just doesn't really work for me as well, and I wish there was a regular speedometer. I'm sorry to be so dull and boring because no one ever does a, a central tack. I want to applaud it, but you know, this isn't really a car that I rev out to 6,500. I've talked about this in other Mazda reviews, but basically having a touch screen and not letting me use it it's one of the most maddening things to me. Uh, and like, even if you're driving with a passenger, your passenger can't use the touch screen because there's no, there's nothing to detect that the passenger is there and could use the screen, whatever. 
It's like, what's the point if I can only use it when it's sitting still? That does bother me. And I find myself spinning the little click wheel like roulette, just hoping that the cursor is gonna land on what I want it to. And I actually find it a lot more distracting than if I could just reach over and touch what I want. So hit and a miss there. Now, uh, a miss without a hit at all is the center console. It's got like two quasi cup holders that kind of fold out of these little square cubby things. And uh, if you look at the video clip I recorded earlier, my water bottle, which is a regular, you know, insulated thermos kind of water bottle, it just flops around in there like crazy. There's no support. And it it's even the lightest water bottles just have nothing to hold them from flopping around anywhere. I don't know what possessed them to do this. Uh, also, you only get the forward one. If you want two, you have to flip up the console uh, to get a second, you know, marginally less terrible cup holder. And uh, I'm not really happy with it. Moving back, the rear seats, a success. There's plenty of room, again, considering it is a compact CV. Plenty of headroom, plenty of stretch out room. And again, the seating position back there is perfect. So this is not a penalty box back seat, unlike some others in the segment. You can fit real people back there and you can take them on a trip to Algonquin and they will want to talk to you when they get out of the car. Moving further back, I have more unkind things to say and it's about the cargo space. First of all, the lift over height is very high. I realize that this is a small CUV and with all wheel drive and that the gas tank has to go somewhere. And that somewhere is apparently under the cargo floor. What it's done is raise that floor a lot, where a lot of cars have like a little recessed well where you can put things underneath the floor. Mazda has that too, although it's literally only that deep. Uh, it's really not gonna help you that much. With all the seats folded up, this has less rear cargo space than the Mazda 3, a little hatchback. And it just goes to show how inefficient that cargo space is being utilized. There's not a lot to be had for cargo space. But you know what has more cargo space than this? The Mazda CX-30. And this is where we need to talk about the biggest downside to the CX-3 is that the CX-30 exists. The CX-30 is a much newer CUV, slightly larger than the CX-3. It has more rear cargo, and I believe it will fix a lot of the problems I have with this vehicle. Plus, if you compare base model to base model, it only costs $3,250 more. I don't know why you would step over the CX-30 to buy this one. It's not a bad car, but the CX-30 is undoubtedly a better car. Full disclosure, I have not driven the CX-30. I've only looked at the specs, but if it's a newer car with more cargo capacity for a pretty trivial price increase, I don't know why you would buy the CX-3 over the CX-30. And in that sense, I think that Mazda probably has fixed a lot of the problems that I have with this car. And most of the problems I have are not things that are bad outright, just that the industry is moving forward so quickly that this was a very competent car when it debuted in 2015, and it was really good when it was refreshed in 2018. Three years later for 2021, it is showing its age compared to the competition. And Mazda, I think, did the right thing by discontinuing the CX-3 in the States for the 2022 model year. So this is the last year you can buy this car in America. So for driving.ca, I'm Clayton Seams. And for more CUV reviews and information, don't forget to follow us online on Instagram and Twitter. Mazda, please continue to give me press cards.